Hi, so in this second tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create uh, a new project from uh, the existing blank game project uh, that comes with uh, the, the Isogenic Engine repository. So we already have a cloned repo uh, as we did from tutorial one. So I'm going to go into that folder now where I have actually just cloned the IGE. You may have it called IG underscore prototype, but it's, it's basically the same thing. Um, the IGE version is just the, the, the paid for version, um, which comes with a few extra features. But anyway, so um, we go into that folder and you'll see a blank underscore game uh, folder right here. And what we're going to do is this, this is designed to be copied outside of uh, the IGE folder. The reason for that is, I don't know if anyone is familiar with Git, if they're watching this, um, you should be as a developer. So uh, if you haven't you know, taken the time to learn Git, you, you should sit down and do that. Uh, it's a fantastic way to look after your code and, and, and make sure that you can revert changes you've made and, and mistakes you've made and, and also collaborate with other programmers very easily. Um, but anyway, nothing nothing inside this repo should be changed. Uh, if you want to if you want to make changes to anything, you should copy it outside of this folder uh, and do it there. Um, because when you make changes to this, uh, you can no longer synchronize your chain your uh, existing copy with uh, any updates that come from us. So uh, anyway, I'm going to just right click and uh, copy that. Uh, going to go back out to the folder that IG is in, and I'm going to paste that in here. So now we have a blank game folder, and I'm going to rename this to uh, Tutorial 2, because that's where we're at. Uh, now I'm going to go into that folder, and it comes with a number of uh, files already in here. The index file, as I'm sure you're all aware, is where the browser will, uh, the, the first file the browser will load. Um, you've got your client.js, uh, index.js, uh, client config. This is uh, basically set up as a, as a sort of a skeleton version uh, of, of a game so that you can start coding pretty quickly. Um, you've got some CSS in here and uh, your game classes as well. So I'm going to just go ahead and fire up uh, a browser real quick. And let's go to, I already have a development system uh, loaded up. And what I'm going to do, that's my tutorials folder. Uh, there's tutorial two. And there you go, there's the blank game that we've just created under Tutorials 2. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with setting up your own web server on your computer, uh, you can go ahead and take a look at some uh, WAMP server. Uh, WAMP server is a good one uh, if, you're, if you're relatively new to setting up a web server. All this web server is doing uh, is serving files from, from my uh, hard drive. So uh, if you want to run any of the tutorials or any of the examples, uh, you, you have to get that web server up and running first um, and there are various tutorials online how to do that so I'm not going to cover that in mine here. So anyway, this is how you set up uh, a new project. So you've just got your basic setup. You'll notice that the frames per second isn't especially fast. That's because of the uh, recording software I have running. Um, so uh, don't, don't pay any attention to that at the moment. I'm going to open the browser console quickly so you can kind of see what happens when a uh, the blank game loads. So I'm holding down Control, Shift, and I'm going to tap J. In Chrome, that opens up the JavaScript console. So as you can see, you've got the version number of the engine uh, and various little log bits here and there that just show you what, what the uh, engine's been doing. Uh, if I click on this, you'll notice uh, we're getting mouse events as well. Uh, that's, that's part of the blank game, it's just built in. Um, so that's the basics of setting up uh, a new project now, I don't know if any of you use PHP Storm or WebStorm uh, by JetBrains, but this is by far uh, probably the best uh, IDE you can get for uh, client-side and server-side development on the web. Um, you do have to pay for it, um, but it's very, very much uh, well worth the money. Uh, it really is absolutely fantastic. Of course, you can use any editor you like, um, but I'm just going to show you how I do it here. So I'm going to uh, create a uh, open a directory. Um, and in this case, I'm going to my tutorials folder and tutorial two, push OK. So here's my tutorial two folder. These are the files that we're seeing in uh, this folder here, by the way. So the same thing. So now we're editing our, our actual game. 
Um, and just very quickly to show that we can make some changes here, I'm going to open client.js. The client.js is uh, the, the, the JavaScript file that gets loaded on the client, that is browsers, um, and uh, there, there's also a server.js which we'll go into uh, in the next tutorial to show you how you can make a multiplayer uh, game uh, with, with Node.js. Uh, and in here, I'm just going to uh, show you quickly, there's a bunch of settings. So show stats, um, if we switch this to zero, I'm going to save that and then just go back to the browser and reload. See this little stats bar down here? If we now reload the page, uh, it's gone. And that's just uh, a little flag turning the stats on and off. The stats are quite useful for development, so we're just going to switch that back on for the time being. Uh, you can also just comment that out instead, which is effectively the same thing as switching it off. Um, we also switch some debugging settings to true here. You can switch that to false uh, if you'd like to have all of your de debugging switched off. Um, and if we do that uh, and reload, notice the output you're getting here. Uh, if we just reload the page, uh, you won't get any uh, clicks. If you look, see I'm clicking the button now. And we're not getting any of that output for, for clicking. There's a bunch of other things that the debugging switches off as well, but uh, we won't go into that in this tutorial either. So let's just keep that to true. Um, you'll see a couple of game textures getting loaded here. Textures are just images. Um, it's just a fancy word for, for, for images you want to have shown on screen. And uh, we're loading a fairy image, uh, which is that little dude there. And uh, then there's a simple box. And simple box is actually a JavaScript file. It's what we call a smart texture. Um, and that's uh, sort of a, just, just a load of um, JavaScript calls that interface directly with the canvas uh, and, and use the canvas draw functionality to uh, draw lines and, and fills and whatever. Uh, and you can turn those into textures as well. So you can have those drawn on screen. Um, then we, uh, we wait for the textures to be loaded. Uh, we create a front buffer, which is actually just the, the canvas element. Um, after that, we ask the engine to start, and we register a callback method, which is this thing here. Uh, so once the engine has started up, we can proceed with uh, creating our scene object, uh, then our viewport, and then a couple of uh, a few rotating uh, met uh, a few rotating entities. Uh, and these are rotator classes. Uh, and as you can see in the comment, uh, it's declared in game classes rotated JS. Uh, and again, we'll come to that later. Um, but that's just a very, very, very quick brief run through of the blank game as it stands. Um, we're going to be extending this in the next tutorial to show how you can add um, multiplayer functionality, very, very basic networked functionality to a game um, using the very advanced features in Isogenic Engine, including the um, the automatic uh, entity streaming system, um, which has built in uh, client side interpolation. So, um, yeah, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.